Thank you. Uh, thank you, Colin. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity. Uh, in view of time, and of course before hell breaks loose, I would uh, like to give you a short presentation on uh, who is Excel and what we are uh, doing. Um, it's obviously a um, different community. I'm now talking to the pharmaceutical community who is looking at electronics, which help them out. And to be perfectly honest, what I'm going to present is we are the electronic industry who is looking towards the medical, the pharmaceutical community to see how we can, how to say, interact uh, better uh, with each other. It's what Colm said, we are part of the joint undertaking family. Um, we are both located a little further down in uh, Brussels and we're trying indeed to find some synergies when I give this kind of talks. I believe that the most important word, which I hope is uh, coming back on a regular basis, is the word joint. It's a joint undertaking. It's all about working together. And uh, we have to work together. We have to work together in Europe to find the utmost synergies between the different industries and between the different funding uh, channels in order to allow to be competitive. The joint undertaking of electronic components and system has been started because we saw a very strong decline in the market share of the uh, production of electronics, electronic components and systems versus America, versus Asia, um, uh, Korea, Japan, Taiwan, China is coming up. And of course, the electronics is um, an employer. There are many people earning their living with uh, just being part of that family. But secondly, and probably even more important, it's an enabling technology where many other sectors do need, how to say, to link up with. I mean, even each of us, from when they wake up this morning until they get here, have been doing a lot of things with all the electronics. So it's enabling many industrial sectors, including health, to uh, move forward in their own specific um, um, development. So, very similar as the, uh, the font did change a little with the transfer, so okay, let's we'll see what's going to happen. Um, very similar to what the uh, EMI is doing is that we also are uh, uh, joint undertaking. Um, we are working on electronic components and systems for European leadership. Um, electronic components and systems, in a nutshell, it's the whole software, hardware, smart systems. So, we're trying to cope with the full value chain from um, developing or designing the, uh, the, the, the technology, the electronics, up to the full building together of the application, including software and embedded systems. Same as EME, we have accounts regulations, so we have legal basis, gives us the right for existence. And um, we're working as a public-private partnership. Actually, we, a little different from EME, are a public-public-private partnership. So next to the money we get from the uh, European Commission, we also get the money from the European or from the Excel participating member states, from European countries who have committed to cooperate directly within the Excel joint undertaking setup. This looks a little, uh, how to say, maybe complicated, but actually it brings a huge benefit because we have the actual commitment of the member states next to the European uh, Commission to actually engage, make a plan, execute a plan, pay for executing the plan. Sorry, the design of the slides is a little messed around. This is probably because my type of computer was different from, how to say, the presenting uh, computer. I'll, uh, I'll keep on talking your, uh, through these uh, individual uh, slides. Again, similar to what Imi is doing, we are to implement the Horizon 2020, uh, making sure that people keep on investing in knowledge and innovation. The whole chain of not only stopping once you have developed the product, but actually bringing the product in the hands of a final customer and it should be done in a smart, um, sustainable, and inclusive growth. So it's not sectorial specific, but it should cope with everything. Again, as what I said before, we are a public-public-private partnership. We have the European Union, who brings in our program 1.17 billion euros, so over the Horizon 2020 period, means from 2014 to 2020, and the Excel participating states, so mainly European member states, are committed to bring the equal amount or more into the program, so that's another 1.17 billion euro. The industry, the private members, the industry has 
the ambition of having a total project portfolio of over around 5 billion euros. So it's a lot of money. The 5 billion euros, of course, you have to subtract what they get from the funding. But the complementary part, roughly two and a half, a little more, two and a half billion, is what the industry will bring in kind within each of these uh, projects. For your information, we, you know that EME1 and EME2 are the two different generations. We are in the XL, and before the XL, we had two different joint undertakings. So actually, the XL is a merger of the ENIAC and Artemis. Artemis was related to, in very simple terms, the software development. The ENIAC was related to the hardware. So we merged, and now we have the XL where everything comes uh, kind of together. What is XL? What are we doing? Um, it's all about smart, getting smarter. It's uh, smart mobility. We're making people to drive safer. It's about smart society. It's, amongst other things, to make people feeling more secure, more connected. Smart energy, to make sure that we are more energy efficient. Smart production, to be able to produce in a very economical, cost-effective way. And then, of course, smart health. I'm going to elaborate more on that. These are the key applications. I'm not going to elaborate on each of these different uh, topics. I think you very well understand what it's all about. For those who would like to uh, understand more, our website is much more specified. There are a lot of documents where you can read uh, more details. So these are the applications. It's all about smart, these different uh, elements. But also, what are the essential capabilities? So in order to become smart, you need to build your smart system integration. So at the end, and then you work your way back to cyber physical systems, means the linking between the physical systems and the cyber world. So this is the kind of sensors, uh, sensors to type. We have the design technology, how to build the architecture. And then, of course, on the left-hand side, you actually need all the hardware, the materials, the materials, the equipment, the processors, and then you go back into the value chain. So it's actually the full value chain we have, because ultimately, like each of you, if your smartphone doesn't work, it doesn't really matter whether it is a software problem or a hardware problem. It, is, it doesn't work. The only thing you want is that it works. So that's why, specifically, the whole community should work together in order to achieve more um, smart applications. Again, as what I said, the Excel joint undertaking has a unique characteristic of having two public legs. On the right-hand side, you see here the European community, for which we get, from which we get the, uh, the 1.17 billion euro money, which we process and treat. On the left-hand side, you see the European member states. Also, they have the 1.17 billion euro. So we are combining these uh, funds, and we give this to our project beneficiaries. Now, also, and I'll try to illustrate a few differences between the Exxon and Ely, is that we not only have the uh, SMEs and the research and uh, the uh, technical organizations, but we also have the large industry as project beneficiaries. So with us, also the project beneficiaries, the, the, the large industries, do get some money. So this is the very general outline. It's a synergy between two different um, money flows. But actually, the, the real situation is quite more complicated. So it's not only member states and European Commission. Member states do have other programs. They have their own national program. You have the Eureka clusters, I'm sure that most of you are um, in, in, in far or in close related or affected by some of these uh, Eureka clusters. So member states have their own programs, complementary to what we are doing. On the right-hand side, also the European Commission. So we have other joint undertakings. We have the bio-based, we have the uh, aviation, we have the, uh, the rail joint undertakings. We have contractual PPIs like the um, factories of the future, the European Green Vehicle, we have the high-performance computing, the 5G, the big data, the robotics, photonics. So there is a lot of contractual PPP, slightly different organization compared to the joint undertakings, we are. And we also have the regular calls, FP7 Horizon 2020. That's another uh, stream of money. And then maybe the third one is the cooperation, collaboration with the regions. So each of the regions, as you might know, has the authority, the mandate, to manage some European funds, European um, structural and development and investment funds, which is under the authority. And also, that's another money stream in order to complement. Anyway, money is not a problem, that in a nutshell. Funding uh, rules, again, for your clarification, these are the figures on the 2016 funding to illustrate how much we give to each of our project beneficiaries. This is the money we are giving. This is complemented approximately the same amount, depends country by country, 
for um, by the national participating member states. So, for large enterprises, the big industries, for the research and innovation actions, so the type of research projects, we give 25% of the Horizon 2020 eligible cost, 20% for the innovation actions. These are the more demonstration oriented, these are the higher TRL levels, technology readiness levels. SMEs get 30% or 25% if it goes to innovation. Universities, another 35% for either or for both the uh, research and the innovation. So this is the picture on where the money goes and what kind of ratios, how one compares to the other. General IP arrangements. Again, here there is some difference between the electronics uh, community and the pharmaceutical medical one. And these are general statements. So this is just to give you in a nutshell the picture on how we're dealing with IP. First is that it's uh, ruled according to the horizon, the general Horizon 2020 rules. So that's our main, how to say, main theme. Background uh, IP remains obviously the, proper, uh, the propriety of the, uh, the owner, but he needs to define and bring it into the project in order to project to allow to start. The foreground is shared on a need-to-know basis. Obviously, when you work together in a consortium or in a work package, once you develop something, there need to be some rules on how you're going to, how to say, use your development or your, your, your projects. I mean, results uh, remain for the uh, creator. So those company or uh, part of the consortia who develop a certain IP obviously um, owns, the, uh, owns the rights and of course can share that depending on different uh, arrangements which are stipulated in the consortium agreement. So everything on IP is ruled by the consortium agreement. Right, I've explained now what, how we are looking like internally. I've tried to make the difference between the, the IMI setup and the Excel uh, setup. Now I'm going to explain a little on what we are doing. Same, very similar as IMI, we do call for proposals, we launch calls on a yearly basis, and we try to address next to the other five items I explained, of course, also smart health. You might have seen the, uh, the health continuum, where we try to cover, and everything is stipulated in our multi-annual uh, strategic plan, we try to cover the whole health um, uh, continuum. It goes from monitoring and analyzing the healthy living to make sure that people live in a healthy environment over any prevention, so making sure that they, people can monitor, manage and monitor their own health, over diagnosis, uh, so the sophisticated high technology diagnostic uh, systems, treatments, once you have found something, try to analyze, and have this done in a very, how to say, not centralized, but in a, in, a, in a decentralized way, and the home care. So we're working, and I'm going to give you some hints on projects, on mobile healthcare systems. So it's not all in a hospital or with a doctor, but we are going towards mobile applications, wearables. I will give you a few examples. We work on open digital health platform ecosystem, so it's all about sharing data. I think in the two previous projects, you have clearly, or you will clearly see how some of these overlap. We working, give you a few examples on minimal invasive surgery and imaging. It's all about how to get into the patient, trying to analyze what is going on. And uh, as I said, healthy living conditions on the environment, but of course also on some aspects on food monitoring. To give you some order of magnitude on what we are, how much we are spending, these are the nine, I think, closest health related projects. Uh, with the acronyms, again, if you Google them or if you go to our website, you find much more information on, uh, on the public deliverables. Uh, we have nine closely related for a total, total project cost of 208 million euro. So it's not nothing. We spend quite an important amount of money on the, uh, uh, on the project. Sorry, the projects contain, the volume of the project is quite uh, important, of which we pay about 40 million euro. So that's the amount we're spending with uh, 200 something um, uh, participants. I'm sure that some of you may may want to participate. I'll give you some um, idea about the projects, uh, what we are doing. Chiron is one of the projects, as I said, from one of our, how to say, uh, previous joint undertaking, Artemis 2009, which is related to monitoring of um, specifically elderly people health condition. So it's monitoring the, the, um, the, the, the heart conditions of elderly people in a way that wearables connect to smartphones, computers into the cloud, and then directly uh, monitored by the, uh, uh, the general practitioner in order to follow up how that situation is going. Complementary 
to some of the um, uh, diagnosis, and these are the images which I show, is that the, the different um, diagnostic elements, the, the, the imaging from the different sets are brought together by, uh, by, elect by, by electronic, uh, electronic ways into a direct application for the specialist to analyze what is going on and how, for instance, a broken arm or leg has been healing up. Now, what is very really interesting from this project is the very quick turnaround, maybe again a little different from the, uh, the medical or the pharmaceutical. This project started in 2009, and in the uh, 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 ski jumping uh, competition in 2012, which is only three years later, so just at the end of the project, this is a project of three years, they already start using this one, and they have used this one to follow the, the physical condition of the ski jumpers when they go very high and then they jump. You can see the heartbeat rising and the blood pressure rising and, and, and so on and so on. So this was, how to say, a health condition monitoring uh, system related to cardiovascular uh, activities. This, sorry for the picture I'm using here, is a project we have uh, been working on uh, from ENIAC 2012, so not so old. If you have an implant in the brain and you would like to take a scan, the implant is affecting the imaging. And what we are trying to do here is to get over that problem, to allow even people with implants to have proper follow-up diagnosis on how the curing is evolving. Now, I'm not going to go into the details, but that's the hardware activities we are clearly working on. This is the uh, development we do on, uh, on the, let's say, highly sophisticated catheters. A catheter who allows to, uh, to image, so this catheter a design is uh, doing imaging but also doing sensors, um, sensing on uh, pressure, on, uh, on bio uh, factors, and also allows to steer, to find its way within the body. So what we are doing in this project is research oriented to develop a demonstrator, to develop a new sophisticated catheter who can be used to find its way within the body and do this kind of uh, analysis. Let's say research. Now, we don't stop there because it's all about innovation. You might have a project which have this result, in a follow-up project, the following years, we have built a pilot line. Within the consortium, we built a pilot line to actually start to build this catheter in volumes so you can do the full, what to say, development cycle, build a few hundreds of thousands so you can start commercializing and see what works, what does not work. It's part of some kind of more advanced, I'm not really sure you can call this a clinical test, but this is kind of a product testing to get it commercially to the market. Astonish is yet again, um, um, how to say, a data gathering um, project where we cover the full uh, value chain from hardware development to uh, clinical test, where in this specific case we're going to follow the development of tumors within the body, trying to image them as, how to say, as, 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 as mobile, as, as close as possible, follow up all these data, transfer it via the cloud, to the specialist who can follow up the condition of these individual patients. It's to bring the highly expensive, dedicated treatment within hospitals to something which can be done, monitored as effectively at home. I may think that some of you get slightly interested to also come and look at what we are doing. I'll give you a few data, details on our call process. Very similar, we will have a call next year, 2017. We will have our uh, work plan approved by the end of this year, 2016. We plan to launch our call in March 2017. It's a two-stage call process. So we have a project outline. You give in a few pages what you think to do. We give some first review. And then in September, end of the September, you have the full project proposal uh, submission timing. Funding decision about uh, November uh, 2017 when our public authorities board will make the decision on how we are going to, or which projects we are going to fund. I'm at your event here, but I would very much warmly invite you to our event, which is on the other side of the demonstration, on the other side of this uh, uh, Esplanade in the Sheraton Hotel, which will take place on the uh, 19th and 20th of October. It's in about three weeks' time. We will explain our work program, the Mass Via, how we go into, what kind of topics we're going to address, and of course, one aspect will be on, on health. I thank you very much for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions. So, thank you very much.
very much, Bert. We, we do have time for a couple of questions from the floor. We're going to go straight away. First of all, I was not aware of this initiative, so I'm very glad to hear. I'm aware that, that many people are not aware, so yes. that's why I'm here. And that is a very, very, very appropriate for what we do in the community that I work with. But one thing that is a technical question that I don't understand. You say that is the public, public, as the European and the national government, national, the member state that the idea, I suppose, to this initiative. And then that is that means that in fact when you make the project, the money will be given partly to the EU and partly to the national government, or will be just uh, I mean this procedure is transparent and you, you will be the consortium will just receive the money by itself, period. And so the second question is if uh, by any chance my member state the member state I belong to is not a part of Excel, uh, if there is any difference, any discrepancy, any different treatment? Um, your first question, the project beneficiary gets, in very simple terms, part of his money, one quarter of his money from the Excel joint undertaking, one quarter of his money from the national, his national authority. So a German company participating in one of our projects, in very simple terms, gets one quarter from the Excel joint undertaking based on the normal Horizon 2020 procedure. And one quarter he will get from the uh, national authority, the Ministry of um, Research and Innovation from Germany. So this is one quarter, one quarter. The complement will be the in-kind contribution from the industrial member uh, himself, herself, himself. So this is, I'm, I'm, I hope I'm clear. In the normal joint undertakings, the money only comes from the joint undertaking itself, not from the member states. So in the, all the other, the, the, the BBI and the FCH and the, the shift to rail and so on, the money usually comes only from the, um, from the commission. That's the first. If your specific country is not a uh, participating state, then in theory, you still can participate. We don't have this as an exclusion rule. However, if the public authorities board is going to discuss on which project to select and they see big companies asking for a lot of money from a country which does not participate, so does not complement, they might feel a little awkward to say that, yes, let's go. Usually for smaller companies, as a means, there is no issue. But if you really talk about the big companies with a big chunk of money, there might be a debate. Now, nothing prevents you to go to your ministry and say, well, listen, this is a very good idea. This is what we would like to do. Please make sure that you get a member. I will be very, um, very happy for that, and I'm happy to go your, to your capital to go and discuss with you guys. 